It is said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, a simple, unheralded action that sometimes changes the course of events forever. Who could have known when the Zero Mile Post was driven into the ground in 1837 what an extraordinary trip this would be? They called it Terminus, the end of the line, a rail line that is. But the name didn't stick, for it never really was the end of anything, but rather the beginning of a remarkable place. By the 1850s, four rail lines emanated in every direction from Atlanta making it the transportation hub for the entire South. But that success also put Atlanta in the crosshairs of war. Historians say businesses were building back even before the embers cooled. The region had a pension for progress and rose from the ashes with attitude. By 1886, Henry W. Grady, editor of the Atlanta Constitution, promoted the city as the centerpiece of the New South, home to some of the country's oldest black colleges, a school of technology, and a diversifying economy. Two years later, Asa Candler would buy Coca-Cola and launch a global marketing phenomenon, the most recognized brand in the world. In 1895, Atlanta showcased its own new brand by hosting the Cotton States Exposition, a 100-day celebration attracting 800,000 visitors. The region was indeed on the map. By the early 20th century, Atlanta was a region on the move and in need of a plan. Noted urban scholar Dr. Thomas Reed surveyed the metro region and framed the issue. No man today trusts himself to build a structure much bigger than a chicken coop without a set of blueprints. How can such a vast and complicated affair as a great metropolitan community have orderly growth without a plan? Dr. Reed's insights would ultimately bring about the Metropolitan Planning Commission, predecessor to the Atlanta Regional Commission one of the oldest planning agencies in the country. But first, the nation would have to go to war. And in Cobb County, that meant working at the Bell Bomber plant. Big industry had come to the region. By the end of the war, nearly 30,000 Metro Atlantans had been employed to assemble some 700 B-29s. The Bell Bomber plant later would become Lockheed Martin and help transform Cobb County into a suburban powerhouse. With the end of the war, regional plans came fast and furiously. There were blueprints for a transit system, a beltway, Peachtree to Cab Airport, and a downtown merchandise mart. Big city arts and culture were on the scene, with the Atlanta Ballet and the Atlanta Symphony in full swing. By the 1950s, the downtown connector opened with great anticipation and fanfare. And in 1955, the Army Corps of Engineers began construction of Beaufort Dam. Completed the following year, it would take another three years for Lake Sydney Lanier to reach its full capacity. As the region's population reached 1 million in 1959, plans were in place for expressways and more buses to travel on them. Then, in 1962, the region's planning agency proposed the metro area's first rapid transit system. Four years later, MARTA was created by Georgia Law. The 1960s also saw the completion of William Hartsfield's unprecedented six terms as mayor of Atlanta. His early recognition of the importance of air travel had elevated the metro region in the eyes of the nation. The skies will be to the 20th century what the seas have been to centuries past, 
And the city that makes its port on this new ocean will be the city of the future. And the future was on everyone's mind. In the mid-60s, planners rolled out a blueprint for the first parallel runways in the nation, on to the world's most traveled airport. And the world would soon come to know Atlanta as the cradle of civil rights, shaped by the character and the courage of Martin Luther King, Jr. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We must live together as brothers, or perish together as fools. And in the 1970s, working together produced stronger protections for our vital water supply with passage of the Metropolitan River Protection Act. Soon, the first MARTA train left the Avondale Station on its way to downtown Atlanta. We were on the move, hitting the two million mark in 1984. And standing as a crowning achievement for the first African-American mayor of Atlanta emerged a shining new airport, a beacon to the world, today's Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International. Metro Atlanta was set for remarkable growth. Population boomed in the 90s, with Gwinnett County breaking national records. New employment centers rose up across the region. Our constellation of universities grew, and our global business presence exploded as we hit the three million mark. What a time it was in 1996, as we welcomed the world to the Centennial Olympic Games. The spotlight shined brightly as Metro Atlanta and Georgia were showcased to the world, and the world has never stopped coming. From terminus to a global metropolis, from civil war to civil rights, from CNN to Hollywood of the South. Bold leadership, dreams, and courage have brought us on this remarkable journey.